Hey everyone, I'm Tefel. In this short video, I would like to share with you idea of creating templates in Unreal Engine 4. You may ask yourself, what exactly are templates? I call like this widgets and defining styles without necessity of creating user widgets, which are really common in uh, Unreal Engine 4 nowadays. Okay, so as you can see, I define this uh, wood template uh, without any of uh, user widgets, which are basically blue. So as you can see, everything is white right now on the left side on the list. Yeah, and that's basically idea behind. And when you drag and drop, everything uh, looks uh, the same. I mean, having already style, which can be reusable. I'm using also some custom uh, U widget like this uh, radio button line, which can be uh, horizontal or vertical, and it has also an array of uh, options which are visible, and yeah, that's basically it. Okay, so you see everything uh, works like it should, there is no problem with it. Uh, checkbox works like intended, combo box works. This uh, slider also uh, on both uh, text fields are changing yeah and everything is uh, working okay so usually when you create normal user widget it's looking like this you just create user widget name this uh, go inside um, and then you need to place a, for example button inside the uh, the widget uh, make this visible on full screen. You can just replace a uh, child, uh, but you can also make this full screen. Uh, it should work in this case. And yeah, next thing what you have to do is defining uh, all dispatchers and rewriting them uh, one by one. So in this case, if there are like five of them, you need to create another uh, events which is calling uh, yeah, whenever a uh, button is pressed or something, so which is kind of uh, problematic. Uh, this problem doesn't exist if we are using normal U widgets. And right now we will take care about creating a new U widget, defining style. And yeah, uh, so yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so right now I would like to create U widget. Uh, which will be looking amazing. Uh, everything will be defined in the parent class and the user won't be able to change this from this widget perspective. And I started from creating simple widget with background, which is this one, and it's just image. Okay, so I would like to add box text, which by default has this look, which is not looking uh, amazing. Uh, to be honest, and I would like to redefine this style. So whenever I place new text box widget will have this uh, style of the uh, of your application of of the project and will be defined in one place. So what I can do, uh, of course, I cannot define style right here because if I do this, it won't be applied to other things. So whenever I do this, it's still not applied. So that's not the best solution, uh, of course. So what I have to do is just finding editable text box. Let's remove this. And let's remember editable text box. And let's find this uh, in our CPP content classes. And what I can do right now is just creating child widget, which will be my editable text box. So when I create this, uh, I can define my style on the right side. So let's place also compile here. It's my editable text box. And when I define my style, let's jump back. Uh, right here, let's make this visible. Huh, that's funny. <laughs> okay, uh, let's make this input. So right now it's applied to both of them. And when I change the color, it's also updated live. So that's perfect. I can also uh, change the color back, which is kind of cool. Okay, so there is one problem with this solution. Uh, as you can see, everything is exposed right here. So style is visible for every user and uh, everyone can change something and make some uh, problems in the end. So that's uh, what I would like to avoid. 
So that's why I go to the parent class, my editable text box once again, and defining in the class settings, which is really handy, height categories. And I define my style to be hided, compile, save. And right now when I go to the widget, voila, everything is hided. So no one can change this anymore. And I can place as many widgets as I want. And everything is uh, basically slate widget, which has all events exposed. And it was really quick. Uh, to be honest, I really prefer this solution than creating uh, all the user widgets and go on. Uh, but there is one problem with this uh, also, because whenever you want to define your style, you can of course do this in the parent class, but uh, to do it, you need to unhide the category. So you need to remove this from here. First of all, you need to uh, go back to the defaults and you need to change the style. And uh, to avoid this behavior, you can just extend this uh, from another class. And that's, I think, the best solution in my uh, case. But of course, you can uh, say it's not like this. Uh, and I would like to, um, I would like to know what do you think about this uh, kind of solution. And please leave the comments in, in the comment. In the meantime, and yeah, so how it's uh, working? Control B. We need to find this. And I can create from this point another widget, which will be my input black. I can rename this to input black template. I can compile. Now I will check if my input black is hiding styles. It's not, so I will hide uh, style. Now my uh, parent class input black template should do nothing. Because here I want to change the style and that's everything what I need. And uh, when I go to the widget, you can see that uh, my input is visible twice. It's, it's as template and it's as input black. And what we can do with this is just defining my input black template as abstract class. And that's the last thing what we have to do. So when I go to input black template, I can just open it and define this as my abstract class. So whenever I change something right here, like this style should be applied right uh, here in the, in the widget itself. And that's really, really, I think, handy and cool. So we have only one input black. And in the, in the style, in the template right here, whenever I change something, uh, it should um, apply to, to, to this look. Let's try it. And if it's a real time, let's, let's, yeah, let's change the look. It's blue. Okay. Uh, yeah, and let's check how it works. So right now I'm having this, uh, this widget. So yeah, uh, there is black text, black text. So we can make some polishing, but right now uh, what we have to do uh, is just going to the widget, finding, okay, I cannot change the style right here. I go to the parent class. I cannot do this right here. Okay, I need to go to the parent class. And in, in my input black template, I can finally change my style, which will, uh, which will change. Uh, first of all, I can put some text uh right here so which is black uh so when i jump back of course i'm using two monitors and now when you record it uh, it's kind of problematic but on two monitors it's really easy to do it and you have this preview so uh, really straightforward and when you change the color of the foreground it should change to white yes basically it's doing this Okay, perfect. And let's make uh, also uh, image hovered and focused like this. So let's paste this right here. And when it's focused, let's make this a little bit yellowish. So yeah, let's go here, save. And that's basically what we need. Let's compile, close and check how it works. Yeah, as you can see, it's a little bit yellowish and it's uh, kind of violet right now text which I think it's kind of cool. 
And that's basically it. This is how simple you can define uh, your U widget, which is not a U user widget. And size is much, much smaller, even in content browser. And I really like this solution. So yeah, basically you can share uh, your opinion in the comments. And of course, if you want more uh, videos like this, uh, please uh, subscribe and uh, like this video because it helps me uh, developing and improving this channel. And of course, uh, see you next time.